This video was made possible through the support of my patrons. We continue the adventures across time and space with the Doctor, Susan, Ian and Barbara, as well as the current formula of One For Me, One For You with show creator Sidney Newman, who originally wanted to make Doctor Who an educational show for kids with some space age stuff to try and hook them in. After a large space-wide adventure with the Keys of Marinus, it's time to get the kids to learn about 15th century Mexico, with the TARDIS team arriving at the time of the Aztecs. With the epic seven-part Marco Polo being such a success, writer John Lucarotti was brought back for a story with a slightly smaller scope, but no less interested in the depiction and the dignity of the time period. But let me back up. The first Doctor, his granddaughter Susan, and school teachers Ian and Barbara land the TARDIS inside the Tomb of Yataxa in 15th century Mexico. Due to the way the temple is designed to allow reincarnated creatures out, but there's no discernible way in, the Aztecs mistake Barbara for being a reincarnation of Yataxa. Barbara is more than willing to play along as she loves the good side of the culture, but wants to try and dissuade the Aztecs from human sacrifices and barbarism, which led to the culture being wiped out when the Spanish arrived in 1519. Until the Doctor can find a way back to the TARDIS, it's a game of survival, with Barbara having to manipulate the High Priest of Knowledge, Ortlock, into staying on her side, and somehow also outwitting the High Priest of Sacrifice, Tlatoxel, who doesn't believe her deception. Much like like John Lucarotti's last script, Marco Polo, the Aztecs is more a serial of survival rather than trying to save the universe or defeat some big bad foe. But that's not to say that Tlatoxel isn't a good villain or anything, we'll just get to him later. But it forces all of our main characters to work on the back foot and under pressure. It makes the stakes feel more intimate and the threat more localised, forcing the audience to engage with the characters rather than getting bogged down in the mechanics of the story in and of itself. Sure, you look at the hidden door to the tomb of Yataxa, and it's obviously way too light to be credible production-wise, but story-wise it helps add to Barbara and the group's deceit. Like, how did the group get in there if they're not actual reincarnations or servants of the gods? Not to mention it also prevents the characters from just straight up leaving the moment the priest's backs are turned. But even if they could leave straight away, I think Barbara would have held out as long as she could. The story's opening scene has her and Susan admire the tomb of Yataxa, and Barbara waxes lyrical about her love of studying this time period, and that the Aztecs were capable of great evil, but also they had great culture. Cutting out people's hearts. Oh, that was <sighs> only one side to their nature. The other side was highly civilized. Well, the Spanish didn't think so. Oh, they only saw the acts of sacrifice. That was the tragedy of the Aztecs. The whole civilization was completely destroyed, the good as well as the evil. Now, I wish Barbara and the story itself maybe specified a bit more about what was good about Aztec culture that wasn't their buildings and their fashion, which slightly hurts Barbara's story arc here, but it still works because Jacqueline Hill sells it. She is the MVP of this serial, quickly adapting from school teacher to a passionate avatar for one of her favourite historical subjects. And even if she doesn't really vocalise or elaborate on what was so great about the Aztecs, in principle, it still makes sense that she would want to dissuade the priests from engaging in human sacrifice. Barbara wants to use her new persona as she attacks her to stop the Aztecs from committing these gruesome punishments and human sacrifices, which might lead to their society being spared destruction from the Spanish. The Aztecs isn't the first Doctor Who story to explore the past, but it's absolutely the first to actually deal with the potential ramifications of meddling and changing the past, allowing us to see a lot of of new friction develop between the Doctor and Barbara, with the Doctor pleading with her to just play along with the Aztecs and to not rock the boat too much, but also because he understands the futility of trying to alter history. If I could start the destruction of everything that's evil here, then everything that is good would survive when Cortes land. But you can't rewrite history, not one line! Barbara, the high priests are coming. Barbara, one last appeal. What you are trying to do is utterly impossible. I know. Believe me. I know. 
we never get clarification on what past experience the first doctor has trying to change history that has caused him to take such a firm position further adding a larger question mark to the title of the show but what's fascinating about the doctor's reaction is that he sympathizes with barbara completely he clearly doesn't agree with the human sacrifices either he even tries to shield susan from having to watch one take place grandfather what's happening why can't i see what's going on you must stay here child you must this is a principled stance specifically about the changing of history and preserving it you wouldn't be advised would you oh dear me no you knew better i couldn't stand by and watch that man being sacrificed do you think we felt any different no, of course not. then why not leave well alone human sacrifice is their tradition their religion there's nothing we can do about it. I had to try. Yes, and what happened? The Toxel lost faith in you, our lives are in danger, and Susan is locked up in some kind of seminary. Well, at least she is safe there. Safe, safe, my dear child. She was perfectly safe here until you started meddling. And Barbara acknowledges and understands the level of deceit she's taking part in as well. You see, we have the two priests, Tlatoxel, the High Priest of Sacrifice, played by John Ringham, and Orklock, the High Priest of Knowledge, played by Keith Pyatt. Orklock! Sorry, Ortlock, my bad. Anyway, these two represent the dual sides of Aztec society, the wise and compassionate and the barbaric and cruel. Tlatoxel sees through the group's disguise pretty quickly, and most of the conflict in the serial is the group trying to outwit Tlatoxel's attempts to sabotage them and reveal them as false prophets. But Ortlock is much more willing to believe and put his faith above his reason. Now, Ortlock is the good guy here, unambiguously. But he's also wrong. Like, yeah, Barbara is a false god. Her prediction of the Aztecs being wiped out in a few years' time is correct, but not because she's a being from a higher power. It's because she's a time traveler. Famine, drought, and disaster will come. And more and more sacrifices will be made. I see a time when 10,000 will die in one day. Where will it end, Yataksa? In total destruction. Your civilization will pass forever from the land. You prophesy our doom? Yes. Let me think upon these words, great spirit. As the high priest desires. But Ortlock isn't some naive do-gooder. He's aware that he's acting on his faith. And he's wanting, understandably, some reassurance from Yataxa so that he doesn't lose everything. There's to be an eclipse. And Clotoxel will offer human blood so that the sun will shine again. Yes. But it's a trick. As the high priest of knowledge, you know the sun will shine again. Unless the gods withdraw their favor from us. Am I not a god? Support me. Clotoxel won't dare defy us both. If I take that course, there is no way back for me. In all humility, I beg you, do not deceive me or prove false to me. But yet, yeah, Clotoxel is the bad guy but in principle, he's right. Barbara's heart is in the right place, but this is a society that is destined for extinction, and there's nothing she can do about it because she isn't divine. The story doesn't sugarcoat the ceremonies that the Aztecs engaged in and those who took part in them either. Barbara tries to hijack a ceremony that's meant to bring the rain. She stops it from taking place, and the proposed victim, rather than being grateful, is furious that his honor has been taken away from him, that Yataxa has denied him the dignity of being killed. Stop! I, Yataxa, command you. There shall be no more blood spilt. You have denied me honor. So he takes matters into his own hands and hurls himself off the side of the temple. And then, because the priest deliberately timed the ceremony, the rain comes anyway. Practically, Barbara's defiance meant nothing. And it's here where I think back to the Doctor's words to Barbara, that she can't rewrite history. Obviously, the show would play fast and loose with time and altering history in the future, but for the here and now, I think his words are less about the morality and the actual logistics of it. When the Doctor says, you can't rewrite history, not one line, it's not a moral argument, it's a logistical one. Barbara can't change history. But maybe that's not where the victory in the story is found. But more on that later. 
Whilst Barbara's conflict is based around the celestial forces of the fourth dimension, the rest of the TARDIS team have to contend with other things to survive, like Ian. I love how involved Ian gets, because he gets very carried away with the suggestion from Tertoxel that he should lead the Aztec armies because, well, he's a warrior of the gods of course. Ian has a rivalry with the warrior Ixta, played by Ian Cullen, whom Ian is initially able to best because of his intelligence and ability to use pressure points with his thumb. This is all I need. To win a victory with your thumb needs magic. To know your enemy's weakness isn't magic, it's common sense. What weakness have I that is vulnerable to your thumb? Pick up your club. Don't worry, you'll be alright. But then this newfound ego of Ian's backfires when he accepts a bout of unarmed combat, which Ixter, under the influence of Tlatoxel, is going to take to the death. And Ixter has a newfound ally in the Doctor, who instructs Ixter to use the barb from a cactus that will sap Ian's strength and make him drowsy. Yeah, don't let him scratch you! What? what? <laughs> Ian does ultimately lose this fight thanks to the barb, but to his credit he puts up one hell of a fight, using grapples and smartly striking at just the right places. Did this guy really just teach science at Coal Hill? Anyway, now you may be wondering why the Doctor helped Ixta in this encounter. Well, to be fair, he didn't realise that Ixta would be fighting Ian when the Doctor gave him the assistance. You see, Ixta is the descendant of the man who built the temple the TARDIS is trapped inside, so the Doctor wanted to help Ixta in exchange for information. From the outside, the misunderstandings could come across as carry-on Aztecs, but in practice it actually fits together pretty organically. The Doctor actually has very little to do with the forward progression of the story, at least for the first few parts, as he's just hanging around the garden, letting Ian and Barbara do most of the work, but to his credit, he's getting distracted by Kamika, played by Margaret Vanderbur, who tends to the garden outside of the temple, and the Doctor is absolutely smitten with her, with the two finding great comfort and wisdom in each other. Of course, the Doctor's a bit distracted, to the extent that he almost gets his companion killed by an Aztec warrior. And I am content to spend the time here like the others. Oh, but their minds are old, Kameka, and that's something I'm sure yours will never be. Your heart is young, too, Doctor. Look at him, look at that joy. And if that wasn't enough, Kamika brings the doctor cocoa beans, with the doctor being unaware that accepting a drink of cocoa from Kamika would cause the two to become engaged. Happy days, my dear. The happiest of my life, dear heart. Mm. Was ever such a potion brewed? In bliss is quenched my thirsty heart. Very prettily put, my dear. Oh, sweet favoured man, you have declared your love for me, and I acknowledge and accept your gentle proposal. Here's the thing though, despite that moment of initial shock at being due to be wed, the doctor actually takes it in his stride. But all this is a long time ago, and I now look forward to a life of bliss with you. And I with you, my dear. Peace and contentment. Serenity. We must have a garden of our own. Yes, why not? A garden of our own. The Doctor genuinely adores Kamika's company and almost seems prepared to get married, even breaking the news so calmly and matter-of-factly to Ian later that day. Where did you get hold of this? My fiancé. I see. Oh, what? Yes, I made some cocoa and got engaged. <laughs> oh, don't giggle, my boy. It's neither here nor there. It's a really sweet subplot, where the Doctor, through his burgeoning relationship with Kamika, does manage to find a hidden entrance to the temple that will allow them to retrieve the TARDIS, and while the Doctor does not hesitate with returning to time and space, he does seem to have a tinge of regret at saying goodbye to her, and she gives the Doctor an ornament as a gift, and the Doctor, at the end, decides to keep it. It's a really nice character beat at the story's close, followed by what's considered by many fans to be one of the defining shots of the Doctor, confidently piloting the TARDIS out of Mexico and into the unknown. Yeah. 
Susan, on the other hand, has very little to do here, but that's not exactly a huge issue. Carol Ann Ford had two weeks holiday during the filming of this serial, so she only appears in part two and three through pre-filmed inserts, where she's taken away from the group and is due to have an arranged marriage, but Susan won't go along with it. Honestly, there's not a lot here other than a potential building upon what was established in Marco Polo where Susan objected to Ping Cho's arranged marriage. I wish Susan had been around to react and respond to her grandfather's burgeoning relationship with Kamika, but production logistics had other ideas. Structurally, it does provide one last obstacle for the group once they're inside the tomb with access to the TARDIS. Obviously, Barbara can't do any more to save the Aztecs from their fate, and Ian and the Doctor have found a path back to the ship, so having to save Susan from having her eyes gouged out is a good way to give the plot some last minute urgency. And okay, they say that Susan is to be quote pierced with thorns, but yeah, it's her having her eyes gouged out for disobedience. That's actually what the punishment is. The Aztecs is a pretty fascinating watch because it's obviously dealing with some really big themes and ideas with exquisite character work, but it does remember to be entertaining and frequently lighthearted, whether it's watching the doctor gushing about drinking cocoa. Oh my dear, cocoa beans. We use these to barter for our daily needs. Oh, what an excellent idea. A currency you can drink delicious or Ian overhearing a plot to kill Barbara and trying to signal to her from across the room that the drink Tlatoxel has handed her is poisonous. <laughs> it's a difficult tightrope to walk, but the dedication of the cast, as well as John Lucarotti's script, is the key to the serial being able to pull it off. I also love how unabashedly theatrical the presentation can be at times, especially moments like Tlatoxo stating his intentions right down the barrel of the camera for the cliffhanger ending to part one. This is a false goddess! And I shall destroy her. Honestly, the only real issue I have with Tlatoxel is that he's depicted as having a prominent limp that goes unexplained. It reads as a stereotype of those with disabilities or physical impediments always being the villains and that dates the story somewhat. But when we look back on the Hartnell era, you think of villains like the Daleks, the Cybermen, the meddling monk and other alien threats, but I think that Tlatoxel should be in the conversation as one of this era's best. He's so unashamedly devilish, but he is really good at manipulating manipulating people and twisting those around him so he can keep himself in a position of power. He's the high priest of sacrifice after all, a tool of punishment that he can use to scare his subjects and keep them in line. Unambiguously, at the end of the Aztecs, Tlatoxel wins. Barbara was unable to break the hold he had on the people, and while Susan escapes her punishment, Tlatoxel still manages to perform his sacrifice to bring an end to the naturally occurring eclipse. Even Ixter, who Tlatoxel has been whispering in the ear of for four episodes, and for all intents and purposes, is not a bad person, gets thrown off the side of the temple by Ian in self-defense. Ixter is an example of good in Aztec society, but it was twisted by Tlatoxel, the stand-in for barbarism and violence that will see the civilization wiped out in a few years' time. It's a downer ending, with Barbara questioning, what's the point of time travel if you can't change anything? However, we've still got Ortlock to account for. His conversations with Barbara posing as Yataxa cause him to doubt his faith, and as a result, he leaves the temple, going into the wilderness to find another path. It's an ambiguous ending, but he and his new ways will survive the impending Spanish destruction of the Aztecs. Barbara may not have been able to save this society, doomed for extinction, but she did manage to save one man. I gave him false hope, and in the end he lost his faith. He found another faith, a better, and that's the good you've done. You failed to save a civilization, but at least you helped one man. 
And let's not forget, this is happening at the same time that the first Doctor has to leave his betrothed. There's back-to-back -back really powerful endings for the show's first attempt to really delve into the dramatic potential of time travel, using the school teachers as an effective character shortcut to get straight into the emotions and the moral dilemma that would arise from the premise. The Doctor's a great anchor, both logistically and emotionally. The production is really strong, though that polystyrene door is not a convincing deterrent to base a story around. The Aztecs is top tier, tightly paced and effective Doctor Who. But then again, this whole first season has been incredibly strong in general so far. Let's see if this trend continues with our next journey in the TARDIS. Since we just visited historical Mexico, it's time for a trip into the far future. It's time to dabble with some more aliens, this time on the Sense Sphere with the Sensorites. I'll see you all next time. Hey folks, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of my review of the Aztecs. This is another first Doctor story that I'd never seen before, before I did this review. And, you know, I had plenty of time to watch it, I guess never got around to it. The Aztecs was the very first First Doctor DVD release back in 2002. But yeah, better late than never. And this is not going to be the last review of a story written by John Lucarotti. That's the massacre, but that's quite a ways way away from now. But if you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe as well to be updated on any future reviews that I do. It really, really helps out to support the channel. And you can also support the channel via Patreon. You get your name at the end of the credits like these wonderful people here. You get these reviews several months early. You can get access to a Mr. Tardis Discord server. And I'd also like to give a shout out to these particular patrons. Adam Gratton, Angus Bajanison, Callum Baird, Chiba City Blues, Dan the Dreamer Shill, Daniel Davis, Darkstar2189, Darren Carver Balsiger, Dean Jones, Dr. Hadley, Dragon Bugs, Dylan Whitaker, Evil Dialect 79, Finley Rude, Flipseed, Ginger Animator, Hunter Graham, Jack D. Evans, James Ivory, Jared Saylor, Joseph Adams, Leela, Mario Fanboy 15, Matthew Perry, Michael Serrano, Miranda Logan, Nate Harris, Palex, Raven Woods, Reese Lloyd, Ross, Ryan Duncan, Samuel Whitaker, Taylor Wooderson, The Brit Sniper, The Doctor 14 Blu-ray Reviews, Timbo 1834, Toby Loxton, Will, Zabi555, and Zrange Folk. Thanks so much to those people, thanks so much to my patrons in general for helping to keep the lights on here on the Mr. Titus YouTube channel, and I'll see you folks next time.